So Will and I are going to um, spend the next 40 to 45 minutes approximately, hopefully, uh, uh, showcasing how to research our collections using our online platform. Uh, I'm going to do a um, an introduction with a PowerPoint and then we'll go online uh, in turns to show you how, how it all works. Um, so let me share my PowerPoint and start with that. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Well, all good. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so how to find treasures in the Linnean uh, collections. I'm gonna start with a very broad introduction about the Linnean Society for those of you who don't know who we are and what we hold. Um, and apologies for those of you who know the Linnean Society quite well, but this might be a nice uh, refresh. So the Linnean Society of London is situated on Piccadilly in London, very close to the Royal Academy. Excuse me. Um, and our library is on the first floor, um, basically it's those windows here, um, and uh, holds about 100,000 books, uh, which are kept in the library, but also in various basements. Uh, we also have an archives collection, which is kept in the tower room up here and various collections scattered around all our buildings. So it's quite an extensive collection uh, and not easily retrievable, which is why if you want to visit the Linnean Society and use our collections, we usually ask to get in touch at least 48 hours in advance to give us the time to retrieve the material that you want to look at. Um, I will have, I think I had the email uh, to contact uh, on the title page. Simply email us at library at linnean.org. Uh, and one of us on the team, there's, there's a few of us, uh, will respond, uh, helping to kind of guide you through our collections, but also to make an appointment and the whole process of coming in to visit. Um, so our core collection, and this is why we're called the Linnean Society, consists of the collections of Carl Linnaeus, the Swedish naturalist, uh, whose life and career uh, went through pr practically the entirety of the 18th century. Um, and these collections are varied. Um, they consist of his library books, uh, quite a lot of which are annotated, as we can see here, his manuscripts, which have all been catalogued, artwork, uh, and then um, biological specimens, oh, and uh, correspondence as well. So quite a, a lot of letters in, in the um, collection and uh, biological specimens of plants, shells, fish, and insects. So all of these are kept in one room in the collection store, which if you have been to the Linnean Society and have been to one of our treasure store, uh, you, can, you can see, um, they're not scattered around the building, they're kept kind of as a holistic collection altogether. This is not the case for all the other collections around the building, which are pretty much kept uh, according to their type of material. This is the case uh, with the collection of uh, James Edward Smith, who is, was our founder. Uh, he bought the collections of Carl Linnaeus in 1784 and founded the Linnean Society in 1788. And Smith's collections very much mirror um, the kind of type, different types of materials that are in Linnaeus's collections in that he too had books, but they're mostly kept in the library. Um, his archives are kept in the archives room. His herbarium, um, his planned specimens are kept in a, a, a separate herbarium to that of Linnaeus. And his shells and insects have been mixed with Linnaeus's own insect and shells collections. So as you can see already, a difficulty of retrieving material because it's kept by type of material. Um, and we'll see uh, later on that the cataloging is very much derived from these different types of material. You catalog these different types of material differently because they, they are cataloged according to different standards. And um, Smith, when he founded the Linnean Society, then uh, um, acquired quite a lot of collections that uh, we call the collected archives, and I'll show you in a minute. And these are the archives of other, uh, of, of fellows of the Linnean Society. And we call that our collected archives. So this is the kind of the third strand of our archives. This is an example 
of the archives of a Scottish physician who went to Nepal, um, India, and Burma in the uh, late 18th, uh, start of the 19th century, Francis Buchanan Hamilton, whose um, paperwork uh, and books were given to Smith. And so they've kind of integrated the archives, but his collections of uh, plants, uh, press plants, have joined the Smith Herbarium. While um, the mirror images, you can see the species of orchid is, is uh, we have the specimen and the illustration of the specimen, that's kept in the archives as well. And this is the case for a lot of the collections. So um, just to recap, we have the collections of Carl Linnaeus, the collection of Smith, which went to enhance Linnaeus's collections, and uh, widening the circle further, the collections of uh, many of our fellows. I have a few of our iconic fellows um, images, uh, portraits here. Robert Brown, who was one of our uh, presidents. We have some of his archives and also his microscope. Uh, obviously, Charles Darwin and Alfred Wasser Wallace. And we have uh, objects that belong to them, uh, such as Darwin's uh, vasculum, their portraits, but also archives, notebooks, and obviously books uh, that they exchanged or they gave to the Linnaean Society. Uh, and then just to have a few women in there, uh, Mar Marion Farquharson, who uh, was a pioneer in, um, a, well, a campaigner uh, who allowed women to uh, integrate uh, um, the Linnean Society as fellows in 1905. And our first female president, Irene Manton, um, who became president, female president of the Linnean Society in 1973. So these are the type of collected archives. And then the fourth strand of archives are domestic archives. So this is what we would call uh, business archives in a way, uh, archives that mirror or illustrate the, um, the activities, the day-to-day -day activities of the Linnean Society from, the founda from its foundation to today. And we have a project archivist who's been cataloging these uh, as we speak. So these can contain minutes. Uh, we have an example here of the, um, um, meeting minutes, which uh, record the uh, talk by um, uh, um, Helen Potter, so Miss um, Potter on the germination of sperms in uh, fungi. Um, oh, sorry, my PowerPoint has stopped working. Here we go. Um, we have all the archives that are related to uh, our membership or our fellowship. Here's the, the certificate of recommendation of Alfred Russell Wallace, but we ha also have an extensive uh, correspondence, uh, mostly from the fellows to the Linnean Society. Um, our ar archives also uh, cover all of the events that were held at the Linnean Society. So we saw we have a whole set of programs for example, but also the society papers. So this is all, a whole collection of manuscripts um, of uh, uh, that of manuscripts that were submitted to be read at uh, society meetings. So this is, for example, uh, a manuscript depicting the red panda, which was read in November 1821. Uh, and then uh, uh, archives related to our collection. So these are presence books, our donation acquisition material and obviously financial matters. And these, this is just a kind of a, an overview of what goes into this fourth strand of archives, what we call our domestic archives. Okay, so as I said, all types of materials um, are treated differently because uh, they need, they follow different types of standards. So um, I have here a very kind of uh, um, a broad overview of the different types of materials that we hold in our collections. These are printed books, archives, which I've um, uh, divided into notebooks, manuscripts and drawings, but also photographs and engravings, artworks, which are the uh, oil paintings and portraits uh, that are around uh, the society, but also uh, watercolors, which are not linked to manuscripts and, are, and the busts that we have around the society, and also artifacts, so medals, instruments like uh, Robert Brown's um, microscope. And finally, our specimen. So all of these are pretty much, you can find finding aids within our uh, within the library or the society. So these are the old fashioned index cards, uh, the, the lists that were 
uh, done of all the portraits. For example, all of these uh, finding aids are on paper. We still use them um, and they, they help us when the online platforms uh, fail us. So we do still use this, but this is not available to uh, the general public un unless you come and um, work in the library. The library catalog is our oldest online platform uh, and it holds obviously any printed material like books and journals and Will is going to demonstrate how it works in, in a little while. Um, but because it's our online, uh, it's our oldest online catalog, it also uh, lists uh, photographs, engravings and the oil paintings. The archives catalog, uh, which follows a completely different system because in archives, uh, the, the items are not catalogued in isolation, but they're uh, catalogued in the context of the collection to which they pertain. So these are generally handwritten material. So this is where we find notebooks, manuscripts, drawings, um, some photographs, I believe, uh, and some watercolors. Um, so it's a question of uh, what has been uh, catalogued in the archives catalog. I should say the archives catalog is relatively new at the Linnean Society. Um, we've only had a full-time uh, archivist uh, since 2015. Uh, and before that, it was done on project uh, basis. So this is something that's still very much ongoing and we are regularly uploading new collections to our archive catalog. So there is very much a need to go back to the uh, written uh, finding aids because not everything has been catalogued in our archive. And finally, we come to the online digitized collections. And these are um, select collections uh, that we feel either need um, less handling, and this is definitely the specimens, uh, and more access. Um, so you'll find in there some books, and these are mainly the interleaved annotated books from Linnaeus's library, some archives, um, li the Linnean manuscripts, the Smith correspondence, for example, uh, but definitely all of the specimens. So as you can see, if you want access to our specimens, the online collections is where you need to go. Um, they are listed nowhere else um, and accessible nowhere else. The other ones, it's a question of using these catalogs um, sometimes in isolation, but often uh, altogether uh, um, in, uh, in tandem. Um, unfortunately, we do not have, and I'm going to pass on to Will just in just a second, but we do not have a single search system which would pull together all the information and the data from these three different platforms uh, and allow for a very easy single search system that would pull out everything that you needed to know about Linnaeus, for example. Um, that we don't have. So um, this is partly why we're having this, um, uh, this hands-on kind of practical demonstration uh, to help you navigate through these three online platforms. Okay, I'm going to, I think that that was it. Yes, uh, I am going to stop sharing and pass over to Will, who will demonstrate how uh, to go about um, using our library catalogue. And then uh, I'll show you how to use the archives and online collection. Lovely. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, as this Will says, my name is Will, um, and I'm the librarian at the Linnaean Society. And I'm going to speak just very briefly um, about how to get the most out of our online public access library catalogue. Um, before I get started, I'll just say that we're going to spend a lot of time today talking about finding aids and uh, discovery tools. Um, but it's always worth remembering there's one finding aid that's always available to you, and that's us, um, your uh, librarians and archivists. So if you do have any questions about any of the material we hold um, and how to access it, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We're always delighted to hear from prospective students um, and researchers. And Isabel gave you our um, email address uh, at the beginning of the talk. So as Isabel said, the Linnaean Society's library catalogue is actually the oldest of the free finding aids we're going to talk about today. The the Linnaean Society has in fact produced a, a catalogue of the books it holds since um, the late 18th century. Um, and over time, it's evolved from a printed book list uh, to uh, drawers of index cards that I'm sure many of us remember. Um, and now most recently, a searchable web-based 
catalog um, provided by a company called IS Oxford and the um, uh, catalog itself is called Heritage Circa. Um, as Isabel said, there are three types of material within the library catalogue, and I'll just recount very briefly what those are, um, because they're covered to differing uh, levels of detail um, and exhaustiveness. Firstly, uh, and least surprisingly, uh, our book collection, um, including our rare and early printed books, is searchable on Heritage. And I'm very pleased to say that nearly all of our books are catalogued, um, albeit to differing levels of detail. Um, so if we hold a book here in the library, you should be able to find it in Heritage. Secondly, our journals, um, that is to say our collection of magazines and periodical publications. About 25% of those holdings are reflected in the online catalogue. Um, and although that percentage is, is increasing all the time, it's still quite likely that journals material held at the Linnaean might not show up in your searches. Therefore, if you're looking for a journal title on a natural history subject and you suspect it might be here or you hope it might be here, it's always worth just dropping an email to us as well. We've got access, as Isabel says, to paper-based finding aids uh, in our office uh, and we can tell you definitively whether we have the material you need. And then lastly, we have some records uh, within uh, the library catalogue for objects, artworks and artefacts. Um, and here, as Isabel intimated, the coverage is very variable. So all of our oil paintings, for example, can be found within the library catalogue. Many of our photographic portraits are also uh, searchable there. Um, but for example, only a selection of our medals um, can be found within the catalogue and very few of our objects or scientific instruments. The heritage catalogue is really designed, as you would imagine, for the description of library books. And so having artifact collections represented there is a little bit of a, a bit of a fudge, but we, we are um, working on that uh, as an active and ongoing project. And, and again, if you're curious to see what we hold uh, in that regard, it's best to uh, drop us a quick email. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we can turn to the catalogue itself um, and I'll just show you very briefly how that's done. I can start sharing my screen. Isabel, can you tell me if you're able to see what I can see? Um, I can see, uh, yes. You can see our homepage. Yep, yep. Marvellous. <laughs> so this is the Linnaean Society's homepage and probably the easiest way to get to our Linnaean Society catalogue is to go to the collections tab here in the top menu. And in fact, you can reach all of our finding aids via this landing page. So we have a little bit of information here about the collections. This is also the best place to find out about any forthcoming closures or, you know, unexpected changes to the service. So um, uh, pop along to uh, Linnaean.org research collections if you um, uh, want to uh, get the latest information. And then coming to the navigation bar here on the left hand side, we can see a link for the library catalogue. And it will come with a little landing page, it will prompt you to enter, and we will find ourselves here in the catalogue. So um, I'll just very briefly go over what it is you can see here. Firstly, we've got a big friendly search box here at the top. This is where we'll be entering our search terms in just a moment. We have um, some quick links here, some news and information where you can find out about some of the material we have in the library and also where you'll, you'll be able to find sort of service updates again, unexpected closures and that sort of thing. Scrolling to the bottom, we have a little new books display. So recently accessioned material, if you're interested to see what sort of thing is being ingested into the library, that's not a bad place to start. And then finally, on the right hand side, little info boxes with our projected opening hours and again, our contact details. So if you ever needed to get in touch, um, that's actually my extension. So if you uh, I wanted to talk to me, that's how you would do it. Some people are sometimes caught out by this box here, the login. This won't affect the majority of people on this call. This is really for members and fellows of the Linnaean Society to uh, log in and manage their loans. So if you've borrowed material from the society, I just wanted to emphasize this because some people 
uh, email me and ask, do I need to log in in order to use the catalog? You absolutely don't. The catalog is fully open access. You don't need to create an account or log in in order to do simple searches. Um, on which note, I think we might as well uh, make a start. So I was going to um, uh, just run through a couple of sample searches. Isabel and I were racking our brains for a sort of common thread that we could tie this together. And we realized that, of course, it should be our patron saint, really. It should be Carl Linnaeus. <laughs> so we're going to do some Linnaean themed uh, searching. Um, and we might as well just start with the very broadest term, uh, Linnaeus in the search box. And this is going to throw up everything, including the kitchen sink. Um, you can see just the most enormous number of results, 2,305. This is because we are doing a simple search on a broad key term, um, and it is searching every part of the record. So it's searching Linnaeus in the title, Linnaeus in the author field, but also Linnaeus in the notes, in the keywords, anywhere in the record that the name or that the word Linnaeus might appear, it's going to throw that back at us. So what we could do is try and refine that a little. We can limit it to Carl Linnaeus. Um, and you can see we're doing it in what I call phone book order. So surname first, because that's the order in which uh, most author key terms appear in our catalog. And you can see that's already starting to reduce the search material that we see. One thing I can mention in passing, uh, a little quirk of our catalog, if you like, and something that's not, not the case for uh, many other library catalogs, is that our results will always be presented to you in date production order. Um, so that is to say, the first result you see will be the earliest material. So you can see here we have uh, the Autos Sanitatis, that's one of the very oldest books we have in the library, produced in 1491. And then generally speaking, the search results will run towards the modern day. So people often say, oh, I've done a search on your catalog, everything seems to be ancient, so I can't find modern material. Well, that's because the catalog will always show you the oldest things first. If you want to see the most modern results, you would click last page and that would show you material about Carl Linnaeus from this year. But in order to really start to refine the results uh, that we're able to generate from the library catalog, it's actually best to click this little button here, uh, the advanced search, because this will give us many more options um, for uh, refining um, the uh, data that is generated by our search. What I thought I would do is I would try to generate a little bibliography, if you like, of works by Carl Linnaeus um, in the Linnaean Society Library produced in his lifetime. Um, and that would, uh, if you like, create a little bibliography of, of Linnaeus as he exists at the Linnaean Society. And one way we can do that, first of all, is to limit what is currently an all fields search to an author field search. So this will now uh, only return results where Carl Linnaeus is described as being the author of the book in question. Um, so we can try that search now. And you can see already we're starting to whittle it down. 1,400 results has gone down to 610. Another thing we can do is we can limit it by media type. So the, the type of item uh, that is being described in the catalog. Very often, researchers will come to us and say, I'm looking for books, or I'm looking for photographs, or I'm looking for a painting. And they find it uh, confusing to judge from the catalog what sort of material is being thrown up by the search. So let's try and limit it to books because that's the little exercise we're engaged in today. Now one, this is a, a real quirk and I'm afraid this isn't intuitive at all. In order to return information about book searches, you don't select the book option. <laughs> that would be far too simple. For reasons best known to themselves, um, uh, predecessor librarians of mine described every book in the catalog as a text. Um, obviously, we're um, uh, in the realms of literary theory here. They're not books, they're texts. So we have to scroll down and select text instead of book. And that will give us um, every author with Carl and S 
as the subject with text. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to limit our search by years of production. So generating a little bibliography of Carl Linnaeus and his lifetime's work. And to do that, we can limit our searches even further by going to the year field. Now, um, I don't expect everyone to know Carl Linnaeus's dates, but I've worked at the Linnaeus Society so long that I've got that in my head now. So 1707 to 1778, that is correct, right, Isabel? I'm not uh, making that up. <laughs> yeah, you've got it right. Very good, thank goodness. <laughs> So let's try this. Fingers crossed, everybody. Yes, there you go. So I'm quite pleased with that result, actually. 491 items in the Linnaean Society authored by Carl Linnaeus, physical books produced in his lifetime, 1707 to 1778. And as you can see, we started appropriately enough with the first edition of Sustainment and Chura, which was published when he was a young man in, I think he was about 28. So that theory seems to be borne out. I think I'm already running a little bit over time. So I'm going to wrap up now. One thing I will point out, um, which uh, people um, often find helpful, is saving results and exporting them. Um, so if you've gone to all this effort, it would be a shame to navigate away from this page um, and, 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 as it were, lose your work. So it's possible to create a little PDF report of the search results you have generated. And you can do that by going to print. Note that you go to print rather than download. Download creates a, um, a, an HTML file that some people can work with easily, but if you're not tech savvy, it's probably not gonna be so useful to you. So if we pop along to print, and you'll see print results, all records, 191. You can fiddle around with how you would like the information presented if you want, uh, ordered in different ways, but I think we're just going to have it as it appeared to start with. You'll click OK. And this might take a little while. And there we go. Go to print. And then it will produce a dialog box that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. What you want to do is just go here to the destination drop down and click save as PDF. And what this will do is it will save your search results as, as you can see, a nicely formatted PDF document. And then you can uh, incorporate this into your own bibliographies. Uh, you can send this to us if you're wanting to fetch material. Um, uh, and you can see the call numbers are here that you can pass on to us for, for us to, to fetch material for you to see in person if that's what you'd like to do. Um, and you can generally take this away and do as you wish with it. I'm sorry that's such a, um, a whistle-stop tour. We don't really have time to go into every sort of dot and tittle of the, of the library catalogue today. There's definitely stuff that I've missed out. Please do put things in the Q&A box at the bottom of your window um, if, if there's anything you'd like us to come back to at the end. Um, uh, and otherwise, please do feel to email us at library at and we can um, help you out as well. But I'm already overrun, so I'm going to pass it back to Isabel. Thank you, Will. Um, okay, so I'm going to use the next 15, 20 minutes, so hopefully 15, uh, so that I can let Andrea talk a little bit more extensively on the online collections to talk about the last two platforms, the archive catalogue and uh, the online collections. So let me share my screen. And hopefully you can see that. And like Will, um, hopefully you can see our homepage. Well, good, thank you. Um, I like Will, I will start from our homepage because all these platforms are externally hosted. So they're not on our website, but you can go from our website. So if you go again to the collections page, um, and you will find uh, ju just as a, an aside that if you uh, uh, select library or archives on the left-hand side menu, uh, it will also bring you to the library or archives catalog. And it will give you uh, more, um, more information on our holdings, so these, for example, are the four uh, strands of our archives that I was telling you about in our in the presentation. 
Um, but I'm going to go to the archives catalog now, which is externally hosted. Um, it's uh, for any archivists out there. It's a calm catalog. It's hosted by a company called Axial. Um, and like the library catalog, it has some quirks. <laughs> So I'm not going to be able to um, do a huge amount of uh, searches, but just a few pointers. So um, this is the homepage of the catalogue. Um, on the homepage, we usually have the latest material that have been uploaded. Uh, unlike the library catalogue, we do not uh, update our archive catalogue. It's not updated regularly um, every day. Our archive catalogue needs a manual update, which is done generally about twice a year so that means that if we if you email us with anything that you see um errors in the archives catalog uh you won't see corrections to those errors until the next time we upload the new uh catalog the, the new uh, records and at the same time it renews every corrections we may have included in, in that upload um, so it's a it's a it's a less kind of uh, regular update than the than the library catalog. The left hand side menu um, has some tips for searching, which may be useful. Uh, I'm going to start with about the catalog, which once again presents you with the four categories, the four strands of our archive. So I'm going to spend the next five ten minutes to, thinking about and showing you how various different ways to search uh, the archive catalog. Um, you've got um, the, the, the easiest way is to use the uh, right hand side uh, search box here. Um, so I'm going to also uh, do a, a search on Linnaeus and because I'm drinking coffee, um, let's go for, uh, I know that Linnaeus has written works about coffee and tea and I want to find out what these are. So I'm going to start with just a general search about Linnaeus and coffee. And the um, catalog will return all the records which have Linnaeus or coffee in any kind of part, whether that's the title, the author or the description, uh, which is why the author is not solely uh, Linnaeus. And um, I will go to the advanced catalog. And unfortunately, unlike the library catalog, you cannot search by creator or author in the archive catalog, which complicates things a bit. Um, if we go at the level of the record, so this is uh, the correspondence of John Ellis, who was a, a linen merchant and corresponded with Linnaeus, you will see that the catalog highlights then uh, every instances of Linnaeus and coffee uh, that will come up. Uh, and if you uh, have a set of words that you want to uh, specifically search for, then I advise using uh, inverted commas to to uh, capture that. Um, I'm not sure um, I can do this. A quick uh, example is I had to I had an inquiry just now, and this is not Linnaeus related. Apologies, um, but who was uh, this person was asking about uh, a botanist called Hugh Cumming. Uh, and just doing uh, a coming search came up with 256 searches. And very quickly, you can see there's William Cumming here. Um, but in order to do a search specifically related to Hugh Cumming, if you put it in inverted commas, then everything, the record that will be uh, thrown back will be um, by Hugh Cumming. And you can see it's highlighted in yellow. Uh, as the kind of the uh, set of words that you have selected for the search. Anyway, back to Linnaeus and coffee. Um, one uh, other thing I would advise when you're searching for something, especially if it's linked to 18th or 19th, early 19th century, is not to confine yourself to one word. And I think that's valid as well for the library catalogue. So, for example, um, we know, you know, if you if you do a search with coffee, you will end up with a lot of um, returns that have coffee in English. Uh, so 31, uh, I've dropped the Linnaeus now, but 31 records, which will all have coffee in uh, the text somewhere. And that can include the Smith correspondence or uh, some of Linnaeus's own, um, own manuscripts. But if you really want to narrow it down, uh, you could also try 
the Latin um, uh, word for coffee that Linnaeus used, which is coffea. And that will bring up some other uh, manuscripts that won't come up in a search for coffee. This is the case, for example, for this manuscript, Lachesis Naturalis, which is part of Linnaeus's medical um, uh, lectures on dietetics. And if you scroll down, coffea is in a section with tea and chocolate. So I would advise to try various different ways. One other way that is also very useful is using the wildcard. So, uh, and you can do that as well on the library catalog uh, using the asterisk. So you, you take the bit of the word that you know will be the same in whatever kind of variations and add the asterisk as the wildcard. And that should um, widen the search to include coffee and coffea in this, in this instance. And all of a sudden, you've got a wider um, search result. Uh, the number of, of results is now 44, rather than um, the more narrow uh, results that we had earlier on. So that's a very broad way of searching using that, um, that quick search uh, box. Uh, one of the quirks is that if you know exactly um, the, uh, the manuscript number, uh, say if it's MS270, um, for some reason, the catalog won't uh, retrieve it, which is, uh, we, don't, we don't know why. So this is where uh, search the catalog, the advanced search becomes much more useful. And um, because if you then bring in that reference number that you know of, then it will bring up the record um, that you're looking for. But again, this is a very useful one uh, to use the wildcard, especially when you're looking for, uh, for example, um, we saw the red panda earlier on. You want to retrieve what the red panda was. So you could try a, a search with, red, uh, with panda, and actually we don't have that many records, so it will bring it up. But you could also try, you know that it's a society paper. Uh, you could also try the beginning of the, um, uh, the reference number, which is SP, but you don't know what number exactly of society paper. So uh, uh, Nastrix will complete that search uh, and will bring up SP456, which is the description of the quadruped, uh, which has the panda in the description. Sorry, as you can see, I'm much less disciplined and I have not stuck to Linnaeus all the way through. Um, but we will come back to uh, Linnaeus now. Um, because one, a third way of uh, searching for archives is to use that key collections uh, tab. In the key collections, you will find uh, the main collections uh, that are in the archives catalog of the Linnean Society. Now this needs uh, updating since our last upload, um, and it's not representative of all our collections, which makes uh, retrieving some collections rather tricky in the archives catalog. And so this is why, as uh, Will indicated, if you can't find it, do uh, get in touch with us because uh, we know the collections and we'll, we'll know how to retrieve them. But the beauty of the archive catalog is that, especially for some uh, collections, is, as I was saying, it's hierarchical. So the items are not uh, taken in isolation. And you can see this nowhere better than in the Linnaean manuscript collection. So if you open a, this is what we call the main uh, fonds uh, in archival terms. This is the main collection is Linnaean manuscript. Uh, and there is a whole uh, description of what that collection will hold. Uh, and it tells you it has 859 items and that the arrangement is thematic. And this is where uh, browsing the catalog um, the archive catalog is very useful. So if you open the Linnean manuscript, you will see that there are um, five what we call sub fonds or sub categories. Uh, one that is called collections of history, that's more of an admin. Um, all of these are the, the manuscripts of Linnaeus's son. Then you've got the manuscripts of Carl Linnaeus himself. Uh, then another collection that is related that miscellaneous authors is um, uh, uh, correspondence of Linnaeus who sent him manuscripts, and the Linnaean portfolio is artwork. But if you open up, um, clicking on that little plus button there, that will open up all the uh, categories that are in the Linnaean 
um, Pater, so Linnaeus, Carl Linnaeus manuscripts. And you can see they've been further divided into themes, biography, botany, medicine, mineralogy, museum catalogues, general natural history, professional activities, travels, and zoology. So uh, in my search for coffee, I'm thinking, well, uh, I know that Linnaeus wrote about coffee in the, in the context of his medical work. So I'm going to investigate further what is included within medicine. Medicine uh, has been further divided between medical theory and medical practice because Linnaeus uh, practiced as a physician for um, a couple of years in Stockholm. And I'm thinking actually it is probably in his lectures or in his medical theory. Uh, and this has been further divided, as you can see. And I think, OK, coffee is probably in dietetic. So I will further open. Uh, and these are all uh, lecture notes, manuscripts, um, text notes uh, on dietetics um, that were penned at different times. So that we've now come here to what we call in archival term item level. So this is the lower level that you can get in the archives catalog. And if I go to Lachesis Naturalis, which um, I highlighted earlier on, you're now at the very bottom of that hierarchy. Uh, so you're in the Linnean manuscript, in Carl Linnaeus's manuscript, in his medical work, uh, theor theoretical medical works, and the dietetics. Uh, and Lachesis Naturalis um, is dated, and funnily enough, on the archives catalogue, the date is right at the bottom, 1742 to 1772. At this point, in order to, you can see that the description is quite lengthy. I mean, this uh, manuscript is long. Um, it has 312 folios. Um, so in order to find tea or coffee, uh, I would then resort to a very simple uh, control F to find, uh, as you do on any, uh, anywhere else on, um, online, and just put cough will do, actually. It will find coffee um, as part of of, of the, this manuscript. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna. It's already quarter past nearly. I'm gonna really quickly tackle the online collections. So again, if I wanted to find this coffee, uh, you know, you have this manuscript, you've got the description, and you're thinking, well, I I know that this might have been digitized. Um, in order to see the images related to that manuscript, you would need then to jump, to jump to our online collections. So our online collections, let's go back to our collections page on our website, are also uh, on, the, on the collections page here. The link is uh, digitized collections here, and it will bring you to yet another platform, which is uh, the Linnean collections or online collections as we call them. The online collections um, have a, a top menu here. We're on the home page here. You can see we've got a selection with pretty much all uh, everything that's been digitized and available, freely accessible um, on our on these online collections. So again, this is a selection of our collections and not everything has been imaged, which means that if you are looking for archives, uh, you need to search on the archive catalog. And then if you know this is, or you think this might have been uh, digitized then come to the online collections to find the images. There are various ways to search. Um, so um, you'll see on our top menu that there is a, a division again, according to type of material. We've got all the specimens here, the artwork and the document or manuscripts um, material. You can also browse through the various uh, different categories that are here. So uh, I am going to do a search for coffee, for example, in Linnaeus' uh, specimen, plant specimen. So if I type here, click here, sorry, you are now entered the Linnaean Herbarian section of the online collection. And there are various ways to type, uh, to search, sorry. You can either search by genus, and this will give you an alphabetically uh, listing of all the specimens in our in the Linnaean herbarium. And so if I go to C and go and look for coffee, coffea, you will see we've got one uh, specimen of coffee in our Linnaean uh, specimen collections. Um, once you're there, uh, you can, I'm not going to talk too much about this, 
uh, there are ways to navigate uh, this page. You can um, make it full screen, which is much easier than to blow uh, the image up. If you uh, use your cursor, you can drag the image uh, in this way. And I will exit full screen here at the bottom uh, and open the metadata here, C4 metadata which will give you, unfortunately, um, the metadata on our online collection is very variable. Uh, so sometimes it will give you the collector. In this case, it gives you the locality uh, India. Um, again, you've got to kind of combine this search with a search of uh, the printed uh, uh, catalog of the Linnean Herbarium. But I also want to go back and see what there is about coffee as part of the Linnean manuscripts because that's where I was. So here is the landing page for the Linnean manuscript. Um, you Again, you've got various different ways of searching by author, by title, by date. You can also simply put coffee in the search option uh, and it will come up with uniquely the manuscript later related to coffee. Now, the level of description will be different because the level of metadata within the Linnean manuscripts is different, which is why here you have Lachesis Naturalis, the manuscript that we were looking at. Um, and if you click on full manuscript metadata, the description will be exactly the same description as you have on the archive catalog. Some manuscripts have been further uh, cataloged, which is why we have metadata for every uh, individual page. So this is a page metadata rather than the full manuscript metadata. And in this case, uh, all the genera present on that on that page have been extracted. If you go back to the manuscript though and open full manuscript metadata, you will have the description as it is on the CALM catalog. Um, hopefully I'm not losing you here. I know this is quite involved. Um, and again, if I want to show to show uh, whatever has been written on coffee um, for the Linnean correspondence, well, it seems nothing. <laughs> but I uh, just want one thing to show you about the Linnean correspondence collection is that you can also, like you were able to uh, search by genus for the plants, you can uh, search by sender. So any uh, of Linnaeus's correspondence are here. Uh, I'll take the first one, Michel Adanson, uh, and you will have access to the letters from Michel Adanson to Carl Um Okay, the in the same way we did a global search for the our archives catalog, you can do a global search for the online collection. So I will now put um, coffee, yeah? and it will bring up every. Uh, thing in the online collections that have coffea either in the genus name, in the species name, or within the text if it's a manuscript. And as you can see, we now have 30 results, which will include, in this case, some shells because the specific epithet is coffea, which will include all the plants, but also, if we navigate on the next page, all the manuscripts and the uh, correspondence. That's a very broad overview of the uh, online correspondence, the online um, collections. Um, I'm aware I wanted to, to, to leave some space for Andrea to say a few words. Andrea, do you want to, uh, we've got 10 minutes left. Do you want to say anything? I can stop sharing and you can share if, if that's easier. Uh, yeah, sure, thanks. Um, let me just share, can you See what I'm seeing. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, just to say uh, one thing um, that's really important, particularly with the specimens on our online collections, is that they don't, they are not listed by their current names. They're listed by the Linnaean names. So it's really important, especially as a researcher. Um, you might, you probably will know a, a database, like if it was Mollusca, you know, to go to worms, for example. Um, if it's plants, you could go to Tropico, so the Linnaean plant name typification project for the NHM. And 
you'd have to almost back search, unfortunately. So you'd have to know, find the current name and then find the Linnaean name and search by that. Um, this is a huge curatorial project, which we just don't have the capacity for, but we hope one day to be able to provide um, all the current names uh, for our specimens as well. But that's, that's really key. Um, uh, I would say as well that our, um, our online collections, that search box will pretty much, it, unlike the COM, the archive search box, you can you can put in specific um, uh, keywords or you can also put in uh, references and it'll pick up everything. So that's really good. Um, because of the way it was done so that we could potentially put metadata for every page, they don't always have metadata. But just so you don't get confused, it is always imp important to go back to back to the main manuscript um, when you're looking at a specific page. So, for example, this one, it doesn't have any additional metadata, no descriptions made on it. Um, another great thing is if you're looking for visuals, say, let's say you are in a manuscript and you want to find sketches or something like that. You can click. It's a bit slow if it's a big manuscript, but you can click on this little um, arrow here. And it gives you a quick thumbnail of all the pages. So if you're looking for a, you're just you're just wanting to find a quick sketch or something, or you know what a page looks like, you can you can filter through like that as well. And then you can click on that specific page. Um, another thing that might be useful, especially if you're doing a large scale research project, is you can um, like the um, sorry, like the um, library catalog you can um, save searches or export your searches. So for this one, um, I have this search, I have all these pages from Ordis Atlanticus, and I can um, export that as a CSV file, for example. Um, and that actually gives you all the metadata, even behind the scenes, um, and you'll see that there's loads that's not there. It depends on the collection, depends on how they've been cataloged, but um, there's loads of metadata there that you can work on. And that might be easier to find uh, specific search words if you're looking for them. Um, so that's really good. This ePrint number is also quite useful. Um, so the catalog is based on a, um, a database called ePrints and you can actually search by ePrints number. So if I go there, when I put e that ePrint number into my search box, um, I will get that specific um, page. Um, and one thing I should say too, it's also, um, so you can do Boolean searches. So um, one of our art, uh, one of our collectors, uh, um, Francis Buchanan Hamilton, uh, talked to James Edward Smith a lot. We have Buchanan Hamilton's watercolors in here, but as you can see, the watercolors aren't coming up in my search because, um, Smith isn't attached to the watercolors in terms of metadata. So here you get anything where Smith and Buchanan Hamilton are mentioned at the same time. If we did it with an or, um, you can see that um, get a much bigger, oh, there I did it before. You get a much bigger, now we have, oh, now we have all of Smith and all of Buchanan Hamilton. So that's really useful as well. But um, yeah, again, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch. And a lot of people ask about downloading the images. They aren't downloadable. So do get in touch if you find an image you want to use and you want to um, to to get a hold of a high res image. So that's that's me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea. You actually um, said a few things that I had on my sheet to say completely <laughs> skimmed over. So I'm going to just conclude. Um, as you have seen, we don't have a single search uh, system. Uh, we have three online platforms. So if you are doing a search, think about the type of material uh, that you are researching, because that will influence what kind of platform to go to. If it's a book, definitely the library catalog, but it might also be digitized. Uh, if it's a manuscript, definitely the archive catalog, but it might also be digitized. If it's a specimen, definitely the online collections. That's the only place uh, where it is. So remember that if you're doing a quite a complex search, uh, you need to use all three for quite a complete search. Um, there are tips on how to um, use and search our archives online. I will try and find the, um, it's at the bottom of the collections page. Uh, it's called, just simply called tips to research our collections. I've just put it in the chat. 
Um, and finally, uh, always never hesitate to email us because we know the complexity of our collections and our online platforms. And we have those all those lovely index cards at our disposal in case we get stuck. So never hesitate to get in touch with us at library at linnean.org.